welcome back to my channel and welcome to another video. If you are new around here, then you won't have known that I suffered from anorexia, which is a form of restrictive eating disorder, for around five years. And I have previously done a video about my journey, about kind of my road to recovery, all of that kind of juicy goss over on my channel before. So I'll link it up there if you do want to hear more about my backstory and about my recovery journey. But for today's video, as I think it's, it's actually really sad how many times we still see people following or pushing people to follow really low calorie diets putting them on only around 1200 calories a day which is the requirements for a toddler not a full grown adult and it can have so many drastic effects to your body now during my restrictive eating disorder during anorexia i was there was definitely one point when i was obsessed with tracking when i would calculate my exact number of calories that i'd eaten that day and i'd always consume around 1000 to 1200 which let me tell you now is far from enough for what I need and given the extent of exercise I was doing as well that was a ridiculously low number to be consuming and so today I just thought I would talk about what that actually does to you what it does to you physically what it does to you mentally to try and deter you from ever thinking you need to be on that low of a calorie diet yes it may lead to rapid weight loss however it won't lead to maintainable weight loss and also it will cause so many other factors too. So without further ado, let's get straight into this video. First thing I'm gonna mention, of course, as we're talking about calories and energy intake, is energy levels. Now it probably won't come as a shock to you, but whilst consuming that few calories, I had no energy. I felt tired all the time. I just didn't sort of have the motivation for anything. And even if I did feel energized at any point, my body had basically entered a starvation stress state, meaning I was just thriving off of adrenaline. Adrenaline is a hormone that's one of your stress hormones. It gets released when you're in that sort of fight or flight situation. So when you're excited for something, when you're scared, when you're nervous, or also before exercise, when you're about to do a sprint, for example, to give you that extra little boost to allow you to do that burst of exercise. So even if at times I was able to push through the exercise and I was able to feel energized sometimes, it was more coming from being fueled by adrenaline rather than food. Now, another thing that comes along with energy and not feeling energized is sleep. Of course, sleep is vital to restore you, to help you recover, to make you feel refreshed and actually have energy to get through the day. However, when you're in one of those restrictive eating patterns, because your hormones are so all over the place, your body's all over the place, my sleep was also all over the place. I found it hard to have a solid night's sleep. Most nights guaranteed, generally around 3 a.m., it was pretty much the same time every night, I would wake up. One of those reasons being I would need to go to the loo. I'd always have to have a wee. Part of that being because you're not feeding your body properly, you get muscle wastage happening, your bladder becomes a bit weaker, you constantly need the toilet. And also, as I was saying, your hormones and everything are all over the place. You've got adrenaline running through you, you're more alert. You never properly settle in to have a good solid night's sleep. You never really reach that true deep phase of sleep, or at least for a prolonged period of time. And that is not nice. It's not a nice way to live, waking up every night, and never getting a solid night's sleep. Then as I briefly just touched on muscle wasting, I thought I would also talk about that. Obviously, as you're not fueling your body properly, your body has to turn somewhere. It originally goes to your fat stores, but then your fat stores start to get depleted, so it looks elsewhere. Where else have we got energy stored? In our muscles, in the protein that our muscles are made from. It starts to utilize your muscles as an energy source. Now, you may get the impression that you look leaner, that you're more built because you can see more muscle, so therefore your muscles aren't wasting. However, what's really happened is that your body fat percentage is just so low that whatever muscle actually remains and what is left can be seen. However, if you actually ate more and trained a style that's gonna help you to build muscle, then you may gain some weight with it, you may gain a little bit of fat with it, and you may not be able to see that muscle, but there will actually be greater muscle mass there because you've built it, but it's just covered up a little bit more. Whereas when you're restricting yourself to the extreme, all of that gets stripped back, shows you whatever muscle you've got there, which let me tell you, isn't really that much and definitely isn't that strong at all. <laughs> Giving you the impression that, that you're well built, but 
honestly you really aren't <laughs> and then leading on from that as i said you lose your body fat you lose it and it goes down to a very low percentage when you're eating such a restricted diet for a long period of time as i said your hormones go all over the place your body enters this stress state meaning it's not thinking you know what my priority right now is to carry and have a baby therefore your period stops as well i lost my period for around three years and it's just it's not healthy it's a good indicator of body health of body function and once your period's lost you know something's not right your body's saying hang on a minute we're in a starvation period here we can't be affording to use our resources towards having a baby let's not prioritize that right now let's prioritize surviving that is our main goal right now we want to survive we don't want to carry life and to think about the fact that your body's even gone hang on a minute you're not in a stable state to have a baby and do one of the functions that your body is made to do it kind of raises a few alarm bells as to you're not doing something right i mean i had a year where i just didn't have my period then i was put on the pill had the pill i was on it for about a year a year and a half and then i got to that point where i was like i really just want to push past this now i want to be on the other side of this i want to gain the weight and i want to recover so then i thought you know what my period's a good indicator that i'm doing something right so i came off the pill and thought you know what these next few months i really just want to push in to gain the weight back getting my period back and actually getting to a healthy point in my life again i am done with having to feel this way and go through these restrictions every day and feel so tied up in my eating disorder so that is what i did eventually i did get my period back i did make a video about sort of some of the things that helped me to get my period back more of my personal journey about how i got it back of course for everyone it will differ so much because it depends what current state you're in and the current habits that you have but if you want to see that video for a few tips and things that may also help you or may resonate with you then i will link that up there so you can go and check that out but if you do lose your period at any point you know you're definitely not doing something right and then along with losing your period as well other kind of physical things that happen are your hair gets very thin and fragile and weak and so do your nails they get very brittle and very easy to break you're already not consuming enough energy and along with that it means that you're unlikely to be able to reach your target for protein it means you're unlikely to be able to get enough vitamins and minerals all of which are vital for proper hair growth and proper nail growth as well so it's even just down to the little things your body starts to fall apart in a way and that's kind of all the main sort of physical things that happen but not to also mention it massively affects you mentally not only just from the edge sort of point of view of all the ed behaviors like restricting your food and thinking about food and everything food related but it massively affects your mood too you feel low all the time i know i definitely did i definitely went through some kind of phase of depression where i just felt really low unmotivated all the time and I also suffered really bad anxiety, especially social anxiety. I became very irritable. I hated being around other people, which, you know, I love my own time. I definitely do. Even now, it's nice every so often just to have some time to yourself. But to the extent where I would avoid social occasions wherever I could, I absolutely hated it. If I went, I just felt anxious the whole time. I felt really uncomfortable and I wanted to be out of that situation as soon as possible. I was also thinking about food 24 seven, which is a perfectly normal response. Your body's going, hey, we need to eat. I'm gonna make you think about food all the time. So whenever there's an opportunity to go look for some or there is food in your environment, you're gonna go and eat that food because we need it right now. And that is why you just end up thinking about food all the time, saving recipes on Instagram, Pinterest, wherever it may be, storing food for long periods of time. It's just your body's response to thinking, we don't know when we're gonna have food again. Let's make the most of it while it's around here. Store up everything we can, just in case we enter another stage of starvation or, or famine is basically how your body sees it from how we've evolved. So it's not a fun way to be when food is just on your mind pretty much through the entirety of the day, which leaves a little thought time for anything else. And it massively interrupts your concentration. You find it hard to focus on things. Food thoughts are just gonna be constantly cropping up whatever you're trying to do. If you're trying to work, you'll be on the task for a bit, then food will come up again and that'll be on your mind again. And it just makes it really hard to actually get anything done. And lastly as well, you sort of become very set in your routine. I mean, I'm a creature of habit. I love a good routine. I love, you know, writing lists, knowing what to do that day and feeling productive. But when I mean set in your routine, you become 
set in your routine. Everything has to happen at a certain time, at the same time every day, including sort of your meals, but not only your meals, also what you're doing in between your meals. And you find it very hard to adapt. So if something unexpected comes up or there's a change in your plans, you're like, sorry, no, I hadn't factored this in it's not gonna happen. Which makes again, very hard to see people and socialize with other people and actually go out and just live your life because you never know when something may come up or you may get invited to something. And rather than actually going out and embracing that and thinking I should go out and enjoy myself, you retract from that and go, it was not in my routine, it's not part of my routine, I hadn't planned it into my day, it's not going to happen. Which, <laughs> let me tell you, is really not a fun way to live your life. So those are kind of some of the main ways in which my eating disorder affected me both from a physical point of view and a mental point of view as well as the actual eating disorder itself and the patterns of behaviour that installs there's of course probably other things that I've either just forgotten about or blocked from my memory or just haven't mentioned in this video but they're all kind of the main things that I can think of so hopefully what I'm hoping you'll get from this is if you've considered going on a very low calorie diet or if you currently suffer from some form of restrictive eating disorder it's kind of made you think a little bit and it's got you thinking about either avoiding a low restrictive diet or rethinking where you're currently at with your eating disorder and hopefully giving you just that little push of encouragement in the right direction for recovery and wanting to get past all of the issues that your eating disorder presents so hopefully you've taken something from this video. If you have found it useful, then be sure to smash the big thumbs up. Also, if you are new to my channel, then it would be amazing if you could go ahead and click on that little red subscribe button down below, as that would mean so much to me if you could do that. And don't forget, there's also that notifications bell too that you can tap on so that you're notified whenever I upload. And I'll be sure to see you very soon with a brand new video. Bye.